don't shoot your eye out, kid. Pew, 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 pew. Hey guys, this week we're going through the Taurus 856. We'll be covering some of the common malfunctions you might see, and we'll also be doing the rifling for this weapon and checking the twist rate. The references for this video will be below. As always, we have our iPro on, we have a clear workspace with no ammo, and we have clear weapons. So we'll see you in a minute. All right, guys, let's go ahead and go over safety for this week. First of all, we have no ammo in our workspace. Everything is locked away. Next, we'll be donning our iPro and we'll be using our iPro for the remainder of this video. Now on the left, you'll see a Taurus 856 and on the right, you'll see a Taurus 66. Let's go ahead and clear these to make sure they're clear. As a gunsmith, you will have to point a weapon at your face multiple times. so. It is very important to make sure that these are clear. Let's go ahead and talk about the tools we'll be using for this week. Most importantly, our iPro. We'll be using a bench block. We'll be using our Taurus 856. We have the frame here and the cylinder over here. We'll be using a clearing slash cleaning rod. We're using some patches. We're we'll using some painter's tape. And let's go ahead and get to the magnetic pan. We'll be using a ruler. We'll be using a pencil, a paper clip, a spire. Then we'll be using some tweezers. We'll be using some neodymium magnets. And of course, we'll be using some jags as well. We'll also be using this vise and chamois cloth. Now let's go ahead and talk about our sear and some of the issues that we might come across as gunsmiths. So our sear is this piece here, this long piece here that's in the trigger. Okay, you can see the pin for this and you can actually see a spring right down in here and that is the sear spring. I want you to notice this little dog here that's coming out and that is connected to the trigger, or is actually part of the trigger itself. And so what's happening is, is in double action, the trigger's coming up and it's engaging this sear, and that's allowing us to cock it and fire it. You can see it coming up. All right, and then it comes down, and then that dog is gonna reset beyond that spring and then the sear comes back up and sets in place. So some of the issues that you're going to come across as a gunsmith is either this pin is having issues, this spring in the sear is having issues, or where the dog and the sear itself meet each other, those might become worn down. And in that case, you might want to replace the dog and or the sear itself just depending on what situation you have so those are some of the issues that you might have coming across a sear malfunction so in this specific case we talked about we would have a failure to cock and a failure to fire in double action right, let's go ahead and talk about issues that we might have with our hand here and this is the hand this silvery piece here and what it does is it engages our our clear cylinder, by the way. It engages the top of our cylinder here in this part here that's called the ratchet pad. And you can see these little spires on the ratchet pad here, this silvery part here. And what the hand does is it moves the little ratchet spires here on the end and allows us to chamber a new round. Okay, so if we have a failure here, this is going to be a failure to chamber. But if we look inside here, we're going to look inside the breech area here. The hand comes through here. Let's go ahead and cock it all the way back, and you can see that hand coming up through here. 
So some of the issues that you might have is actually on the very tip here, this is starting to become worn down. So we would want to replace the hand itself, finding the correct model of the hand or getting a larger hand and making it the way that we want to fit it. So what our cylinder stop does is it is what's locking and unlocking our cylinder itself. As you can see in our cylinder, we had these little notches here, and that is where the cylinder stop is going into. So you can see as it comes up, in this example, we have the spring here, as we talked about before. The spring is pushing in through here and is pushing up on the cylinder, which is locking it in place. So a problem here would be a failure to lock or a failure to unlock, depending on what's happening. So a few issues that you can run across are, one, this spring being an issue, which in case you would have, you would, in this case, you would have to change the spring here. In a case like this other 66 that doesn't have a spring, uh, you would have to check the spring that's in the frame itself, or maybe even this plunger here, or same with the plunger on this one. Another issue you could run across is actual the rounding down of the top of the cylinder stop itself, or there might be a timing issue, or these are actually the grooves in the cylinder itself are running down as well. So those are some of the issues you can run across with the cylinder stop. Lastly, we're going to talk about some of the issues we might come across with the hammer strut, or in this case, we're going to talk about the main spring assembly, which is this three part piece here. You can see this is the hammer strut, also known as the main spring center pin. And then we have the main spring here itself. And then at the very bottom, we have the main spring plate. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to just take it out so we can get a closer look at it. So now we're going to talk about some of the issues that we can have with this mainspring assembly. One of them being the spring itself. The spring itself can just go bad and we'd want to replace that. Or if we had the means, we can go ahead and fix a spring ourselves. Something else is this mainspring plate at the bottom, which is being held in right now by this paperclip. And it might have an issue with setting into the bottom here of our frame. So that would be something that you'd want to look at too. Maybe it's just set wrong. Some of these platforms here are, are being sheared off or coming off. And lastly, we're going to talk about the strut itself. And a couple of things that can happen. You can see a little bit here on this one that just with this little bit of use, we're getting some wear and tear on it. Okay, so that's something to watch out for. Just And we can also look at the back of the, the hammer here. And we can see in the hammer where the strut sits in, and that can become worn down too. So in that case, you might have to replace the hammer itself or look at some other means to try to fix your hammer and strut assembly. All right, so here we're going to measuring the rifling or the twist rate of the rifling. We have a magnet at the back of our barrel here. And I'm using this modified cleaning pad here or patch. And what we're going to do is we're going to use this clearing rod here on a swivel. And I've made a flag here, as you can see, the blue flag. And once I set it here, get a little bite, I'm going to mark where the barrel entry is here with a pencil. And then is, I'm keeping this flag at the 12 o'clock position. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to push it forward. And you'll watch the flag move. We'll probably get a one-eighth turn here. And then from there, we will measure it again. Okay, see, so we've stopped at the end of the barrel because of our magnet. Now we're going to mark it again. And after this, we will get the measurement and the twist rate. All right, we're going to go ahead and measure our twist rate here. So this is our first mark, and this is our second mark at the end of the crown. And we got right around 2.1 inches. So 2.1 times 8, which was a 1 twist 
we would be right around 16.8 and the manufacturer specifications are 16.5. So we'd be right in that area. So our twist rate is good. Let's go ahead and talk about why twist rate is important when it comes to rifling. All rifling has, and all weapons have specifications for the rifling. If they fall out of line, whether it be damage to the rifling or someone using an improper round, we need to know that. So as gunsmiths, we have to go through, check the rifling for ourselves, and see if there is actually new barrel needed. If there's not, we need to find out what else is wrong. It could be that the customer or friend is using the wrong ammunition. So that's why twist rate in rifling is so important. That concludes this week's video where we went through the Taurus 856 and checked some of the common malfunctions and we also checked the twist rate for it. Here are our references. We use the Gun Digest Book of Revolvers Assembly and Disassembly 4th Edition. Of course, we use our FTH 202 Mechanics and Firearms Revolvers course. We use the Gun Digest Book of Exploded Gun Drawings 7th Edition. We also use the Taurus 856 manual, and we also use gunsmithing pistols and revolvers, 4th edition. That concludes this week. We'll see you next week, and stay frosty, guys.